the Most Holy Trinity Parish. Today we celebrate the fourth Sunday of Easter. I do have a couple of announcements. It is spring, so we're ready for our summer raffle sales. Tickets can be purchased after all masses while they last. The Most Holy Trinity Ladies High Tea is Saturday, May 18th. Check out the flyer in the bulletin for more details. The Outdoor Gardening Club is appealing for volunteers to help maintain our campus. Just call the office if you're interested and leave a message for Cheryl. And finally, today <clears throat> excuse me, is World Day of Prayer for Vocations. Uh, I think when you came in, you may have noticed that the Knights were handing out prayer cards. <laughs> and uh, they'll be, uh, have something to say about that at the end of service, okay, to kind of enlighten everybody. Our opening hymn is number 570, Alleluia, number one, number 570. <laughs> the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. As was mentioned in the introduction to the Mass that we celebrate today, World Day of Prayer for Vocations. So all of us are called in a particular way by our Lord to something very specific in this life. And sometimes, too, as we pray, whether it's to the married life, single life, the priesthood, diaconate, and the religious life, but also everything that we do is a calling to God. If we're open to his direction and respond to that, that we will find that peace and joy in this life and the path that leads us to eternal life. As we'll hear Jesus say in the gospel passage today that he is a good shepherd. His sheep know his voice and we follow him. So with that in heart and mind, let us now prepare ourselves to enter into these sacred mysteries. Lord Jesus, you are the good shepherd of Israel who brings life to his sheep. Lord, have mercy. Lord, Lord have, have mercy. Christ Jesus, you died and rose from the dead to bring salvation to your faithful flock. Christ, have mercy. Christ, Christ have, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you are the good shepherd who shows us the way to the eternal pastures of the heavenly kingdom. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Glory to God in the
let us pray. Almighty, ever-living God, lead us to a share in the joys of heaven so that the humble flock may reach where the brave shepherd has gone before, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. Thank you. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. Peter, filled with the Holy Spirit, said, Leaders of the people and elders, if we are being examined today about a good deed done to a cripple, namely by what means he was saved, then all of you and all the people of Israel should know that it was in the name of Jesus Christ, the Nazarene, whom you crucified, whom God raised from the dead. In his name, this man stands before you healed. He is the stone rejected by you, the builders, which has become the cornerstone. There is no salvation through anyone else, nor is there any other name under heaven given to the human race by which we are to be saved. The word of the Lord.
A reading from the first letter of St. John. Beloved, see what love the Father has bestowed on us, that we may be called the children of God. Yet so we are. The reason the world does not know us is that it did not know him. Beloved, we are God's children now. What we shall be has not been revealed. We do know that when it is revealed, we shall be like him, for we shall see him as he is. The word of the Lord. you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to St. John. Jesus said, I am the good shepherd. A good shepherd lays down his life for the sheep. A hired man who is not a shepherd and whose sheep are not his own sees a wolf coming and leaves his sheep and runs away and the wolf catches, catches and scatters them. This is because he works for pay, has no concern for the sheep. I am the good shepherd, and I know mine, and mine know me, just as the Father knows me, and I know the Father, and I will lay down my life for the sheep. I have other sheep that do not belong to this fold, these also I must lead, and they will hear my voice, and there will be one flock, one shepherd. This is why the Father loves me, because I laid down my life in order to take it up again. No one takes it from me, but I lay it down on my own. I have power to lay it down and power to take it up again. This command I have received from my Father. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise Praise you, Lord. Lord. <clears throat> Today, on the fourth Sunday of Easter, we celebrate Good Shepherd Sunday. And, and also, it is a day of prayer for vocations. It is a day when we reflect upon the tender image of Jesus as a shepherd of us all. It is also a day set aside to pray for more shepherds within our church who will shepherd God's flock with the heart of Christ. Through his shepherds, Christ teaches his word he gives, it, he gives out his grace with the sacraments and leads the flock towards the kingdom. He gives himself as food in the sacrament of the Eucharist. He imparts the word of God through the scriptures and tenderly guides his people. Jesus provides his church with shepherds who can follow his heart, that is, men who representing Jesus through the sacrament of holy orders are willing to give their life for their sheep, 
with pastoral charity, with a humble spirit of service, and with clemency, patience, and fortitude. We have heard the good news because of those who were sent to preach the gospel. Christ was sent by the Father. The apostles were sent by Christ. And the apostles sent their successors, our priests, down through the ages to us. And we too must continue the mission because we too have been sent. The word that was preached, the word we, have, we have all have heard, began with Christ, the word who became flesh and made his dwelling among us. The word is not only to be heard by our ears. Each time the good news of Jesus Christ is proclaimed, the words may strike the ears, but we must also, well, we must also allow the seed to be planted in our heart. We sheep who are so helpless have a hard time listening and living under the easiest of circumstances. What will we do in difficult and dangerous circumstances? Wolves are trying to snatch, scatter, and destroy us. And some of these wolves are in sheep's clothing, presenting themselves as our friends, or even shepherds, but are actually our enemies. Therefore, we must be attentive listening for the shepherd's voice to guide us each day, recognizing it amidst the noise can be challenging with various influences vying for our attention, but it's possible. He knows us and we know him, but it would serve us well if we came to know our shepherd even better. Do you listen for the shepherd's voice guiding you each day? Recognizing it amidst the noise can be challenging with various influences. One way to come to know our shepherd is by reading and meditating on the scriptures, which are his own words to us. As we engage with his word, we become more attuned to his voice. Additionally, God speaks through inner peace, especially when he seeks, when we seek his guidance in prayer. When faced with decisions, opening ourselves to his will often brings a profound sense of peace. The learning to hear God's voice is a process of habitual listening, recognizing, and responding. Through consistent prayer, we become more adept at discerning his subtle prompts. Reflect on your prayer life. Do you, actually, do you actively listen to God's voice? Cultivating a deeper prayer habit can sharpen your ability to recognize his guidance in everyday life. As we immerse ourselves in the story of salvation, we encounter God who seeks a personal relationship with his flock, who knows each one of his people, our strengths, our weaknesses, our desires, our hopes and aspirations, our sins, our disappointments, and our heartaches. We also learn that despite our lame response at times to the riches the Lord showers upon us, he continues to seek us, to pursue us, and ultimately call us to dwell within, with him for eternity. Another way to come to know our shepherd is to do what we are doing here gathering for the holy sacrifice of the Mass, and receive the Eucharist, the body and blood of the Good Shepherd. Though God shepherds us today through his sacred pastors, we are all called to participate in the shepherding of the Good Shepherd in our own unique way. We are called to lead and shepherd those within our families, at work, at school, within our neighborhoods, social circles, and in every other societal context. But too often we allow our own selfishness and desire for self-importance to interfere with our ability to put others first and love them with the shepherd's heart. Yet so too are we called to die for our own selves to raise up the lives of others whether sacrificing our time and energy 
to care for a young child, an aging parent, a loved one who is ill, or a friend in need. A sacrificial offering of ourselves to God can be a frightening prospect, though. What will he ask? What will I have to leave behind? Will I be able to do it? Will I measure up? However, fear vanishes when we live out, when we live out of love and faith to Christ. We need to remember that the Father asked him to die for us. But then look at the fruits he, that this bore. Taking on our humanity, Christ descended from the, the splendor of his divinity and raised us up to a new level. He did the impossible by bearing the weight of all our sins. He trusted in the Father to give him strength. Today, we might be asked to die more so for our, to our own self-love, to leave behind a vice which we have been struggling with, or to trust that with grace we can live a truly Christian life in a world becoming ever so more hostile to Christianity. In doing so, we are entrusting our lives to the Good Shepherd, who laid down his life for us and takes up our lives with his with his to eternal salvation. In the end, if we love Christ, we will not be frightened because he has already shown us the way, a way that he has already conquered. Reflect today upon the calling you have received to lay down your life for others in imitation of the Good Shepherd. In order to imitate this love in the heart of Christ, we must love with, without seeking love in return. Laying our lives down in an act of sacrificial love that enables us to look only at the needs of those around us. Pride and selfishness must disappear and the good of the other must become our only goal. Reflect upon how well you do this and pray that the Good Shepherd will use you to shepherd those in your life who need it the most. Let us now join together in prayer as we make our profession of faith. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. And by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Amen. St. John wrote that the love the Father has bestowed on us enables us to be called children of God. As God's children, we address our needs and prayers to the Father. The response to our petitions is, Lord, hear our prayer. Let us pray for the church that we may attune our ears to the voice of the Good Shepherd 
and courageously follow his call to proclaim the gospel in word and deed. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That our legislators and policymakers will remain committed to peace, truth, justice, and the common good. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. On this, the World Day of Prayer for Vocations, that the Lord may raise up many vocations to the priesthood, diaconate, consecrated life and marriage, especially from our own parish community, and that the Holy Spirit grant them fortitude, courage, and peace in their discernment. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all priests, especially those serving the Diocese of Scranton, that they may faithfully and joyfully live out their vows each day and mirror the protection of the Good Shepherd to all the people they serve. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the lost and wounded sheep in our flock, that they may come to know the love and mercy of the Good Shepherd through our outreach and care. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And let's pray for all who have died in the hope of the resurrection. May they rest in eternal peace in God's heavenly kingdom. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. God of love and compassion, you sent your only son to shepherd us on our life's journey. Hear the prayers of your flock and graciously grant them through your son, Jesus Christ, our good shepherd and risen Lord. Amen. Amen. Please join in our offertory hymn, number 470, The King of Love, My Shepherd Is, number 470.
Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice of your hands. The praise and glory of his name for our good and good of all his holy church. Grant, we pray, O Lord, that we may always find delight in these paschal mysteries, so that the renewal constantly at work within us may be the cause of our unending joy through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation at all times to acclaim you, O Lord, but in this time, above all, to loud you yet more gloriously when Christ our Passover has been sacrificed. For with the old order destroyed, a universe cast down is renewed, and integrity of life is restored to us in Christ. Therefore, overcome with paschal joy, every land, every people exalts in your praise, and even the heavenly powers with the angelic hosts sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim. Holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. And you never cease to gather people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice. And giving you thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your church, and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you willed to reconcile us to yourself, grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, 
with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, and with all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth with your servant Francis, our Pope, and Joseph, our Bishop, the order of bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who are pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory. Through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him. O God, almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope in the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom power, glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. And the peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. So let us offer each other a sign of peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed.
join in our communion hymn number 480, Shepherd Me, O God, number 480.
and let us pray. Look upon your flock, kind shepherd, and be pleased to settle in eternal pastures the sheep you have redeemed by the precious blood of your Son, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. I right, ask you to please be seated. For a few minutes we have a reflection on our vocations, prayer, World Day of Prayer for Vocations weekend, so we have a representative from our Knights of Columbus Council to say a few words leading to a prayer. Thank you. morning. This weekend we celebrate the 61st year of the World Day of Prayer for Vocations. This day is an annual appeal for prayer for vocations within our parish, diocese, and in the world. The message released by Pope Francis for this year's observance urges Christians to welcome our shared vocation to sow the seeds of hope and peace in our world. Pope Francis wrote, each year the World Day of Prayer for Vocation invites us to reflect on the precious gifts of the Lord's call to each of us. As members of this faithful pilgrim people, to participate his love and plan and to embody the beauty of the gospel in different states of life. <clears throat> we are all asked to listen for the Holy Spirit in our lives as we live each day. Vocation discernment is the process by which men and women in the Catholic Church <clears throat> recognize their vocation in the Church as well as in the world. The Catholic Church identifies vocations as being the life of a layperson in the world, either married or single, the ordained life of bishops, priests, and deacons, the consecrated religious life, at Most Holy Trinity Parish, we are looking forward to develop and begin programs which will lift up our parish community. One of these programs is a vocations ministry. We hope to bring more awareness concerning vocations by learning about the many assets of the diverse types of religious life. In the coming weeks, through the section of the bulletin called Vocation Corner, we will continue to explore the many ways we may be called upon to be service to our parish and the world around us. We are also adding vocation awareness education for the youngest members of the church by including it in the CCD curriculum. Additionally, in the coming weeks, we will hear about a traveling vocation chalice program. This special chalice will be made available to parishioners to take home for a weeks of prayer for a week of prayer for vocations. We hope that it will open the door for more discussions and more family conversations. We ask that you pray for vocations, and most importantly, we ask that you listen to the Holy Spirit in your lives. I personally have answered God's call to serve his people and his church by living by my life by the doctrine of the Knights of Columbus. I would just like to add that becoming a knight has brought me so much closer to our church and being a parishioner, and would invite anybody interested in becoming a knight to talk to one of us. Now, please locate the prayer card you received as you enter the church. Father will lead us in our prayer for vacations, and thank you. Please stand. And let us pray together the prayer for vocations, Pope St. John Paul II, vocation prayer. Lord Jesus, as you once called the first disciples to make them fishers of men, let your sweet invitation continue to resound. Come, follow me. Give young men and women the grace of responding quickly to your voice. Support our bishops, priests, and consecrated people in their apostolic labor. Grant perseverance to our seminarians and to all those who are carrying out the ideal of a life 
totally consecrated to your service. Mary, Mother of the Church, the model of every vocation, help us to say yes to the Lord who calls us to cooperate in the divine plan of salvation. Amen. And the Lord be with you. And with your spirit. And bow down for the blessing. May God, who by the resurrection of his only begotten Son was pleased to confer on you the gift of redemption and adoption, give you gladness by his blessing. Amen. Amen. May he, by whose redeeming work you have received the gift of everlasting freedom, make you heirs to an eternal inheritance. Amen. Amen. And may you, who have already risen with Christ in baptism through faith, by living in a right manner of this earth, be united with him in the heavenly homeland. Amen. Amen. And may the blessing of Almighty God, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit come down on you and remain with you forever. Amen. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be Amen. to God. Please join in our closing hymn, number 367, Shepherd of Souls, number 367. Mm -hmm.